when did the, you see that type of change start to happen in our community? It, it, it happened with a young man by the name of Carl Burden of Stokes. Okay. Carl was not a typical governmental person. He was not a typical politician. This man had aspirations for future fame and development. And so Carl was on the scene. It just happened that Ralph Loco was the mayor. And we sent a delegation of preachers down to talk to Loco about changing things because there was Bert Gardner was probably the only black person down in the city. All the other people were just janitors and whatnot. And we were not uh, accommodated in terms of equal opportunity for work. Can, so, can, can, can I take a step back in it? Yeah. You, you said something that I, because we talked about you come into Cleveland and, and you're seeing all the black folks that you saw there. And then you mentioned uh, a group of pastors went down to City Hall. I wanted you to just enlighten me a little bit about your involvement and getting with that group of pastors and how important the pastors were to the community to make the type of change that you needed. Because of the the situations and circumstances in Cleveland for black people. Mm -hmm. Ministers were on the cutting edge of trying to change things for, to improve the lot of people. Mm -hmm. So we sent a delegation of people, Rum Jarman was one of them, as I recall, mm -hmm. to City Hall to talk to Ralph Loca. Mm -hmm. Instead of him dialoguing and discussing with us, mm -hmm. he put us out, he called the police and put us out. Really? So Carl Stokes called us, called me. Mm -hmm. He said, don't get mad, be smart. Mm -hmm. He said, get yourself together. Let's change this stuff. Hmm. Let's let's go for the gusto. Mm -hmm. don't, don't just be angry. Let's go for the gusto. So he began to organize. That that insult, mm -hmm. that embarrassment by the then mayor caused us to come together under Carl Stokes to begin mm -hmm. a journey of trying to change things fundamentally here in Cleveland. Wow. And that began the group of the pastors. That and... began the group of the pastors. Wow. wow. And I happened to be, it happened on 79th and Quincy Avenue at uh, Bob Lawson's church, mm -hmm. Emmanuel Baptist Church, Carl Stokes and Dr. Clement mm -hmm. came by. Because at the time, Ken, ministers were not too familiar with political activity. That's they right. just steered away from it. They didn't mm -hmm. want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. But I told you, my theological upbringing and, and, and philosophy wove into political and governmental activity. And so at that church that, that day with Dr. Clement mm -hmm. and Carl Stokes, was saying, let's get us, let's get this together. Let's be, let's just change this thing. The ministers were quite reluctant, but I made a bold motion. <laughs> I made a bold motion that we, the ministry mm. of Cleveland, African American, and anybody else who wanted to join us, would join Carl Stokes and Dr. Clement in our effort to, for him to become mayor. Mm. That took off. Wow. Ministers then got around him, and we began a journey of trying to make sure that this man would be elected. So what was the atmosphere and, and the times like then? Because then I, I, I tell everybody without the use of social media and the stuff that people rely on now to get their information, you literally had to be in the place. You wanted to go to church to get the information that was going on. When they called community meetings, it was important that you got there to get to hear those kind of things. Get, take us a little bit back on that and building that up in Cleveland. The church, the black church, the African-American church, the church in particular mm -hmm. in, in the black community mm -hmm. has been the uh, instrument, mm -hmm. has been the, the most potent, the strongest force mm -hmm. for improvement and aiding the efforts of African-Americans to regain freedom and equality. Mm -hmm. The black church has been the strongest institution mm -hmm. to, to ferment that kind of activity. And so being together, all of us coming together, we were able to change the paradigm and understand for the first time that we either go up together or we sink together. So then the, the ministers then coalesced with Carl. And as we've just done not too long ago, we began making sure that we would get out in the community. And that's where Dr. Martin Luther King comes into the equation. Mm -hmm. We invited Dr. King to come here to help us. and that. Uh, spraying the kind of activity that you saw all around the nation and especially here in Cleveland to gain uh, political 
uh, momentum and that uh, of success here in Cleveland. Let me give some some political insight on the, what they call it, the urban legends and stuff about that. I, I was told that a lot of churches didn't want to welcome King coming in to Cleveland. A lot of black churches were scared and didn't want him in when he came. Uh, you know how history is. Mm -hmm. King, everybody loves Martin King now. But back then, the list was very small. The, the law, the, you didn't have people following it. I remember in March, March 23, 1965, when Martin came, he got the mm -hmm. Nobel Police Prize, and he came, mm -hmm. and the city welcomed him and gave him a big party. But he came here in March 23rd in 1965. Mm -hmm. And let me just say, I dare say, that if, if it had not been for Martin Luther King's ferocious efforts mm -hmm. at mobilizing and galvanizing the community, we never would have made it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my statement, and I think that I stand by it. Mm -hmm. that, that he, he brought resources, financial resources. He brought his entourage here and dedicated all of what he had to making sure that happened, that we would elect the first African-American of the major metropolitan city. Yeah, okay. That was what that was all about. Correct. So it was critical, mm -hmm. and the, it was critical that that King brought his entourage and all of his people here to help us. Mm -hmm. I would just say we would not have made it had mm -hmm. it not been for him. So how crucial mm -hmm. and critical he is. Let me go back, March 23rd, 1965, Martin came here. And again, marching down the streets that he had done before to win Martin, I think within May something, 63, he had come. But again, he had throngs of people, thousands of people on 105 going down. And uh, there were about 6,000 people. Hmm. And I witnessed that. And Martin came to Core Methodist Church. And we were sitting in the pulpit, Martin and I were sitting in the pulpit along with some others. And uh, Martin said to me, he said, Kevin, this, we have more people on the outside than we have on the inside. Mm -hmm. Corey seated about 3,000 people. Mm -hmm. So it was packed to capacity. So he said, would you mind opening your church so we can accommodate some of those people outside? I said, be, I'd be delighted. So I slipped out the back door. I got to my church, we opened up, and they made the announcement that King is going to run the Great Everson and make a speech, and he'll come back to us. So he came out of the door and came to our church. And we had a civil rights committee, because I was always sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a civil rights committee, and we had raised that Sunday morning about three or $4,000 for him. So uh -huh. I presented that to him that night when he came to our church. And he made that initial speech before he made it at Corey. And he was thanking us. And after he preached there, and we went back to Corey, later on that night, he was at the Sahara Hotel, which was located down the street, the Sahara Motel, mm -hmm. in an African-American motif. And he was there, and we talked for about an hour that night. Remember who and all of them were in that counting the money that they had raised. <laughs> uh, but I, I Martin talked about Cleveland. Mm -hmm. He said, I love Cleveland, Ohio. Mm. And, and if you look at his history, you cannot, you can see all over again how much he loved Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And so I, I said, why do you love Cleveland so much, Martin? He said, because there are so many ex-Alabamians in Cleveland. <laughs> that was his concern. Mm -hmm. And he brought money. Mm -hmm. He brought his entourage, he brought people together, and we he aided and assisted the blessing that we have. And so that was a historic moment of mm -hmm. March 23rd, 1965, when Martin came. He came, he left the Selma to Montgomery, Alabama March to come here. Uh, Kellogg was a councilman. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember Julius mm -hmm. Kellogg? Mm -hmm. He left his shoes with Julius. I don't know whether those shoes are now, which I had them. Mm -hmm. But he left those shoes. Martin's legs were swollen. Mm -hmm. he, he was tired, fatigued, and the like. But it just goes to show you how committed this gentleman was mm -hmm. to making sure that he did his job while he had the time. Committed, totally committed to the efforts of trying to lift black folks from the shackles of slavery and, and, and deprivation to success in terms of equality, freedom, and justice the organizing and, and the pulling the community together. Who were some of the people that were really, if you think about, with some of the instrumental pieces of pulling that together? I, I think you, you, you got to give it to George Forbes. Mm -hmm. Lou Stokes was a lawyer during that time, and he had done the NAACP with together. Mm -hmm. Conscious of racial equality with James Foreman mm -hmm. and uh, a number of the guys who were here. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a collective effort of everybody being on board. Mm -hmm. Everybody participated. Uh, Carl was, was, was the kind of guy that wasn't going to let anything pass him. He went to the pool hall 
he, he went to the, the bars and everybody because he wanted everybody to be involved in it. And, and as a consequence, his magnanimous kind of gregarious personality made him affable for everybody. They just, they, they loved him, they embraced him, and they were attached to him. And Martin had that same kind of charisma. So you put those two illustrious, distinguished gentlemen together, and you got power beyond imagination.